understand the fact that you cannot tell people what to do and what not to do on their social media platforms. There are people who do not mind being FBI, okay? There are people who do not mind being detectives and inspectors and investigators on social media. These things are not what make you. These things are not identity bearing things. Society naturally gravitates to complimenting them. Oh my God, you look so good, girl. Oh my God, you look so, so good. As if being thin, is the right thing and being fat is the wrong thing. Walking out with a 17 year old or 16 year old and he is freaking 52. Okay? And people would look at them and think, oh, that's probably his daughter. It isn't. People cannot separate social media from reality. And because of that, you lose good friendships, good relationships. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to part two of Candid with Cat. Social media. Is it toxic? Is it not? What is it about social media that is good? What is it that is bad? So as you guys know, I asked on my Instagram for your opinions on this. I've already shared mine in the first part of the video and this one is going to be considerably much shorter than the first one because I shared my stuff. But I'm going to add my two cents into what you guys have shared on uh, my Instagram. So I put up an Instagram post the other day about social media and I wanted to hear your thoughts about it. Is it good? Is it bad? What do you think of social media? Is it doing a great thing for society? Or is it a bad one? What is your take? And here we go. So right. the first lady says, people think that social media famous is a ticket to being a celebrity. It's not. Go touch grass. I think this, this comment really comes from a negative place. I don't think everybody who's on social media believes that I'm going to be on social media because I want to become a celebrity. There's a big difference between social media content creators and celebrities. I feel that way. Okay? There's a huge difference between a celebrity and a content creator. And I feel like a lot of content creators are perfectly fine being labeled as content creators or as influencers. I typically don't like the term influencer. I like to be called a social media content creator, right? Um, but them, her saying that being social media famous is, a, people think that it's a ticket to being a celebrity. I don't think so. Um, the go touch grass, I think this is the part of this comment that made it feel like it was coming from a little bit of a negative place. Like, you, there's no need to be mean. Okay, girl, you can actually just say your point without being mean about it. But I don't think that um, social media content creators feel like once I get into the space and I get famous, I'm going to become a celebrity. I don't think any of them think that because if you think about it, majority of the cases, they don't become celebrity. They, the celebrities, they just become content creators and they refer to themselves that way. I've never heard a content creator or a digital creator say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a celebrity because I've got over a million followers and I've got a whatever, I'm a celebrity. Do you know who I am? I've never seen that. Well, from the ones that I follow, so I don't know. But I think it's it's really, it would be naive on the creator's side to go around calling themselves a celebrity just because they have a large following online. It's very different. Same lady says, also, the amount of, of people that talk about things that they don't have full information on. This I agree with 110,000%. This is what I was mentioning in the first part of the video. If you haven't watched it, I suggest that you watch that and come back to this one. But this is what I was mentioning about how you can have a lot of people who will go online and become coaches and self-proclaimed, self-credited, self okay? Self-proclaimed, self-diagnosed coaches and therapists all because they know how to speak well and they may have a little bit of self-awareness and all of this but a lot of the time if you are going to talk about a certain type of depression i feel like if you are not a licensed therapist or whatever you have to make disclaimers here or else if you are somebody who's not 
suffering from depression i think you have to be very careful about some of the things that you share online about depression or whatever because people will talk about things like oh no you're not depressed you're just sad and all of this and actually say things like this out loud or say it to somebody that they may be coaching or engaging with or or, or whatever when you are not licensed accredited you are not you have not gone to school to actually diagnose somebody with depression so yes social media is very dangerous because then you have people who do not know what they are talking about they end up saying things and because of that you've got smart people on social media as well you've got smart people online as well and they call them out and they bash them and they say this that and the other right so it's really important to be able to have that self-awareness right you have to be aware of some of the things that you are saying online and for me being a coach i have to be very careful about some of the things that i say online that is why i don't post videos all willy-nilly and say things out of pocket i think about the things that i say and i become very particular about how i share it and what i share i speak about things that i've gone through a lot in my life Things that I've been diagnosed with and as a coach who has studied and I'm accredited for it, then I can speak about things like that. I didn't just decide, oh, well, because people like me and I speak really well, I'm going to call myself a coach and make a business from it. I actually decided to do the right thing and actually go to school for it so that whoever comes and works with me knows through how I coach them and the things that I say and all of this that I went to school for it. I'm not just speaking from a perspective of an empath, for instance, right? So I definitely agree with that. Oversharing. I don't need to know that you... FC... F-U-C-K, okay? Uh, I don't need to know that you had sex with your daddy's best friends or your dog. Um, yes, I agree with the oversharing part. I think... We need to also be able to understand the fact that you cannot tell people what to do and what not to do on their social media platforms. But I do agree with the fact that oversharing has got very negative implications on you, on your life and on your credibility. So if you're going to overshare something like you had sex with your friend's daddy, what, 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 what. People will, there are people who do not mind being FBI, okay? There are people who do not mind being detectives and inspectors and investigators on social media who will follow up and find out whether that's the truth or not. And there are people who are going to make your story blow up on, on TikTok and whatever. And if you get backlash from it, that's what you get sometimes for oversharing. So I think it's, it's a two-sided coin. We cannot tell people not to overshare. It's not our place or our business. If you feel like somebody is oversharing, don't follow their content. Don't watch it. Scroll right past it and keep it moving. But we also cannot feel, cannot say out loud that, oh, no, there's no need to overshare. It's, if it's not your business that you're oversharing, I don't see why concern yourself with it. That's, that's just my response to all of that. I think we need to be aware of the fact that just because you're not doing it doesn't necessarily or just because you take don't take kindly to people oversharing doesn't mean it's wrong or right um and 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 that's that yeah young people's self-worth is damaged by social media's unrealistic expectations absolutely correct this is what I was talking about in my previous videos is if you look at how many young people go on to TikTok just crying just completely devastated and how they feel like their life is boring or it's not going anywhere or it's not whatever whatever and they feel less than they feel degraded they feel smaller they feel all of this all because their peers and i'm talking about their peers like people who are in the same age demographic as them are achieving a lot more than they are and because of that they feel like their self-worth has not been put into question they feel like they're not is it because i'm not worthy of this life is it because i'm not deserving of this kind of relationship is it because i'm not deserving of this kind of friendship when in actual fact it isn't 
but how it negatively impacts somebody's mental health and mental state of being is frightening. It's frightening. That's why you see so many people commit really terrible acts towards themselves. They unalive themselves. They feel like they don't deserve to be part of the world or part of society or whatever. All because they feel like they are not living the life that they should be living. And maybe it's because they just don't deserve to be here or they are unworthy of it. It's frightening. It's frightening at the rate. And, and it's crazy because... So many people now, a lot of us, I'd like to say 80-90% of us struggle with mental health struggles, issues, depression, anxiety. That's why I focus my work solely on that because I want people to know that these things are not what make you. These things are not identity bearing things your life who you are the person that you are what you bring to the world what you bring to the relationships of your life and in your life right the people that are in your life that is your identity your value systems your belief systems now i'm talking from coach perspective okay that is your identity not necessarily what you have what you don't have the bags that you have the amount of times you get onto a plane every year or um, the parties that you go to or the money that you have absolutely not absolutely not it's frightening it's frightening. it makes me feel like I'm fat because everyone on social media is so thin now the toxicity around body positivity body image self image uh, listen dysmorphia is frightening on social media as somebody who's always had self-image issues, and I think I have a video as well in my membership space where I talk about body image issues, my body image issues, the things that make me feel some type of way about my body. As somebody who has struggled with this growing up, I don't struggle with it now. I don't care. Like, if you don't like how I look, that's your mess. <laughs> okay, but I do also have moments where I feel like, oh my God. I feel like I'm piling it on right now. What's going on? And it makes me feel some type of way, right? But not not for long. I've 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 done a lot of work in therapy and a lot of work in loving myself to know that it's not my body and how it looks outwardly that makes me. It it really isn't that. It's it's, it's what I got in here and what I got in here for people and myself so i don't worry about things like that anymore but i definitely agree with how social media makes one feel that way now we're feeling like everybody is thin what is going on and there's this complex like oh, when somebody loses weight and they become thinner um they'll naturally if they were a certain size before and they become thinner society naturally gravitates to complimenting them oh my god you look so good girl oh my god you look so, so good as if being thin is the right thing and being fat is the wrong thing, right? But these are, this society has a long way to go with all of this. I have always made it a point that I do not, I do not endorse unhealthy living and then calling it body positivity. I don't endorse that. I don't, I never have, right? But... I do not also endorse seeing thin as right and fat as wrong. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She goes on to say that the grass is not as green as it looks on social media. I moved to the UAE. The ghetto. <laughs> Wes. This is true. We look at the UAE, Dubai, right? We look at Dubai and we think, my goodness, this is lux living. I want to live here. I want to make this kind of money. I want to do this. I want to do this. And we forget about the society of Dubai, the culture, the religion, the all of this, that when you go to certain countries as a person of a certain skin color, your experience of that country, you might have money. Oh, you might have the money, right? But your experience of that country is going to be very different to a person of a different skin color experience of that country do you understand what i'm saying and it's not the same but what social media will do is project this awesome living and all of that because they live in a certain country and making a certain kind of money they're doing this this when again i say behind the scenes it's not that way 
and it's really hard to try and convince people or to try and impart that information into someone's mind or behind the scenes that's not what it is baby girl don't pressure yourself like this because behind the scenes that is not what it is it's really tough it's 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 a very difficult one that one all right another lady says social media standards on friendships and relationships as a whole freaking crazy because of social media relationships with young children and much older men have somehow become and i say this very loosely because i'm very careful with my words normalized it happens so much that people aren't even surprised a man could be walking out with a 17 year old or a 16 year old and he is freaking 52 okay and people would look at them and think oh that's probably his daughter it isn't Men come out onto society having relationships with 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, being called out on it, and then proceeding to having another relationship with a 16-year-old or 17-year-old. And you have these young girls who are going onto social media and talking about, oh my God, my man, my man, my man, 17, 18-year-old, my man, my man, my man, took me to Konka and did this, and took me here and did this, and took me to this country and did this, and bought me all of this, and did this, and all of this. And your man is 50 and you're 18 I don't care that 18 says you're an adult there is a very unhealthy level of discrepancy in terms of power and control in that relationship there's a lot of grooming that's happening there there's a lot of control that's happening there and because of that it leads one to believe a lot of things that are not consensual happen in that relationship when you when you when you don't when you want to say no but you can't say no because you're 18 and he's 52 but you will take that as an 18 year old and he's 52 and actually say my man my man my man because it gives you the opportunity to go onto social media and show your fancy bags and all of this dangerous frightening frightening friendships social media has made people believe that oh my god the epitome of great friendships you know is going out and and having a good time and this and this and enjoying and this and this it's always fun it's always trips it's always my friend is rich and she has branded stuff like i do and we all wear wigs and we're not different we just pretty much look the same like it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's, Co photocopy your friend is a photocopy of you right um all of this blah 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 and you look at these kinds of friendships and you think this is true friendship no it isn't true friendship is somebody picking you up the floor off the floor when you have gone through the worst heartbreak somebody who is listening to you every single time after you speak about that heartbreak somebody who goes to your family functions because you have lost a family member Somebody who's willing to sit and stay up with you at 2 o'clock in the morning because you are on the brink of mental collapse. And they are stay, staying up with you because they do not want you to do something that you might regret or do something that you will not come back from. That is a friend. Not just seeing the nice times. Of course, even with our own friends, we go to the nice times. We go on lunches. We go on staycations and vacations with our friends. I've done it before with my friends. But at the same time and in the same breath, I can tell you, my mom passed away. My friends were there, right? We have family functions and we have family things and whatever that happened, my friends were there. I've gone through horrible breakups. My friends were there. And I've done that for them too. That is true friendship. But what we are seeing on social media, what is the sky doing? Okay. But what we are seeing on social media is not that. And it's crazy because this is the standard that we want to pit our friends against. And like, this is what we should do. It's caused a lot of social media. This lady says, I know her. Hi, girl. Uh, it's caused a lot of classism amongst the young old and everything else in my opinion absolutely right i spoke about it in the previous video ageism classism right if you don't look a certain way you know what i love tiktok for because tiktok has made even people who do not live this fancy certain type of lifestyle 
show that they this is the life that they live and they're good with it and they they they've they've con they've created content and they have spoken to the wider range of people who live that kind of life and not this luxury life right but because of that classism will always develop classism will always exist and social media perpetuates this a lot just because you don't have an Hermes bag and you don't have a Fendi shoes and clothes and Louis Vuitton and all of the blah, blah, blah. Then you can't be my friend. You can't sit here. Okay? Classism. Ageism. Just because I'm a certain age, every time somebody wants to come at me on social media and degrade me and insult me and all of that, they're gonna be like, why are you even talking? You too old to be on social media. Ooh, mama, way now. Here, this, this, this. Okay, mama, sham, I hear you, mama. It doesn't do anything for me, personally. <laughs> it just means that I've got, I've got somewhat of a brain. And for me, it doesn't really impact me in a negative way when somebody says that, you know, because my age means years of learning and going through things and experiencing life much more than that 22 year old has done so for a 22 year old to come and tell me that oh mama tula you shouldn't even be on social media i don't care i hope it makes you sleep at night it puts money in my pockets because i'm on social media and i make money from it do you make money i don't know <laughs> it's fine it's fine <laughs> you know that's not the point but you hear my chat right it shows, she continues to say, it shows the lack of self-awareness, uh, absolutely, and ignorance in our society. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Not even going to add to that because, yes. Going back to the other lady who put up quite a few, she says, she says, failing to separate social media from reality, relationships and friendships are failing as a result. Here, absolutely agree with you. 110,000%. You expect a relationship to look a certain way based on what you are seeing on social media. And when it doesn't meet your standards of what a relationship should look like to you, maybe not even based on social media, even in your mind, right? What a relationship should look like to you, you throw it away. And that might be one of the best relationships you've been in, ever. Maybe not. Maybe you're still going to get someone better. I don't know. Whatever, bro, right? But because of social media and what it's depicted that relationships should look like, we tend to not give people grace. We tend to not give people kindness. We tend to shut down and say, I'm not going to deal with this. It's fine. This is too difficult for me. Blah, blah, blah. This is not looking like what a relationship should be looking like based on what I'm seeing on social media. So because of that, I'm out. Because of that, a lot of relationships and friendships fail as a result because people do not want to bring themselves to saying that, okay, we're not perfect, we have problems, but we, if, if you still want this, I still want this, let's work it out. And not base it on social media or not base it on the fact that I have zero tolerance for this kind of thing, I'm out. And a lot of good, I even put up a tweet the other day. I put up a tweet and I said, many good people are thrown away like they're nothing. Good people, genuine good people are thrown away like they are nothing. All because people are not willing to deal with their struggles or walk through the difficult times with, with, with those people in terms of friendships and relationships. Or they're just done with it. So you decide to throw a good person away. Somebody who kind of would have stood by you and all of this. It's crazy business. And I see that happening a lot on social media. Social media is informative and entertaining when used. When used it. I think also when used correctly. It's informative and entertaining when used and when used correctly. This is what I'm adding to it. But there are certain issues, beha behaviors that ick me. She says, one, the hate and disrespect on social media it gives people the audacity the audacity to say whatever thoughts that come out of their mouths all because they're protected by the world wide web absolutely and this is what we struggle with if you're somebody who's go going to be a digital creator or be on social media period and give your opinions and whatever <laughs> You are opening yourself up to a lot of vitriol, a lot of rhetoric, a lot of 
insults and all of that because people feel like, well, it's not like you're going to see me. I'm on the other side of the world. So I can tell you that your teeth are ugly. Somebody told me that. I'm on the other side of the world. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm on the other side of the world. Like somebody, I spoke about this on a TikTok of mine where I was out with my sister one night and somebody who follows myself and my sister said to me, to my face, I actually know where you live. I was like, okay. And she said, yeah, no, because... Uh, we live in the same area. I've actually seen you come out of the complex where you stay. What, what? And I'm like, girl, audacity much? And now she's saying this in front of other people, people I don't know. And my sister popped off. And I casually, just uh, respectfully and maturely uh, put her in her place. And we left. But yes, it gives people the audacity to say things out of pocket and feel like that they are protected by the web. She also goes on to say the growth of people's opinions and criticisms of people's bodies, body shaming, definitely added that, we spoke about that. It also normalizes, we said it, it also normalizes promiscuous behavior in the youth. I don't want to be seeing 15 year olds uh, and their videos about talking about sugar daddies. We said it. So let me know what do you think social media has done for you? How has it helped you? Do you think social media is toxic? Do you not? Let me know down below. Thank you so much. I think this video is long enough. I really do appreciate you being here. Thank you for choosing me over and over again. Until the next one, I am going to go now. I will see you very soon. If you like the video, please watch all the ads. Please like the video. Please share and repost this video to someone you think would love and needs to see it. Thank you so much. Thanks for choosing me. I'm gonna go. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara.